So we have one other question that had to do with uh, the position is called Iron Pillow. Uh, the name for this position was given by my friend John Frankel. Um, he took this and ran with it. Uh, he and I both, to give credit, uh, first saw this position taught by Henry Higgins. I mentioned before that I have done this position, the version where you're facing away from an opponent for years, dating back to like 2007, 2008, when I had a pretty bad neck herniation and any stress, even mild stress on my neck, um, even a mild post against my neck, like my neck would pop and I'd be out of training. So I sort of had to develop this facing away, kind of kick myself when I saw Henry teach this, the facing version, because I realized how much easier life would have been for me had I been doing that all along. Um, so I want to give credit there, but uh, this is a fantastic addition to the side control skills, side control escaping skill set. And I've been focusing on mount bottom fixes. This is a great position because what it will do is basically eliminate against somebody who's trying to flatten you out or, or keep you flat. It will enable you to take away all their ability to do that because all the main routes to flatten you out. Um, which essentially would have to do with being over your arm, under your arm, or getting some manner of cross face, they're all taken away. So contextually, when you use this, number one, it will be when somebody is trying to flatten you back out, if you're starting to get on your side or have arrived on your side, uh, it will prevent that. And also, it is a fantastic way, if you know your legs are beat, and somebody's about to get around your legs past your hips, and get to side and you know that you have to concede the pass, transitioning directly into this position will essentially make your side a side bottom, a continuity of your guard so they've never truly passed, never truly established control, although they haven't gotten around your legs. And then you can immediately go into your escapes. Uh, what I always suggest is to really work on the posture first, have people get past your guard, get to side, and try and break down the posture first and just practice maintaining posture. See how they do it, see how they break you down. Secondarily, then you can start to work on your escapes so that you can choose when you're going to enter into the escapes, which is both a part. I'm not going, going to go into everything. Um, what I'm gonna focus on is somebody trying to flatten you out. Once somebody cannot flatten you out, which is much more simple than you would think, then basically all they're going to be able to try and do is to go over your legs, uh, such as to mount, or try and run around your head. I'm just going to focus on the first part for right now. So the position, uh, before I grab you, Brian, the position here is this. It almost looks like you're just chilling out, rolled onto your side on the beach, or you're just ending a yoga class or something. And <clears throat> you're going to basically put your ear and jaw on your bicep. Just chilling here, making the arm pillow, hence the name Iron Pillow. Your key position here is what you're doing with this arm and shoulder, okay? It's all about this shoulder because right here, okay, <clears throat> you'll notice that my shoulder, top shoulder is stacked over my bottom shoulder. So any pressure here is going to hit the shelf of my physical structure, right? The, the architecture of my collarbone, my shoulder, and I can be rolled flat because the body, body rolls like a cylinder. However, once I, can create a forward rotation on my shoulder here like this, okay, this sort of that corkscrew motion. Now it's impossible to flatten me out unless somehow you could come through a trap door at the floor and hit me at like this angle, like this uh, vector could potentially do it, but there's no way to do that, of course. So the position will be pinky finger here, thumb here, pointed down, right? And then my arm can travel in different places, and we'll talk about that in a second, but the key here is that my shoulder rotation maintains properly. And a lot of time, people think you have to have this big, strong post here to be able to move. There's times to do that, but you know, honestly, sometimes people will start to try and push your knee to rotate you back. So as long as your shoulder position is good, you don't even have to have traction on the floor, per se, with your feet. Just this alone will do it. So let's take a look at that from a couple angles. So grab what I am here. <clears throat> And I get into the position. So first thing is, can you flatten me up? So we get into this position, okay? So you notice that once my shoulder is rotating that position, 
and we'll see it here. Okay, go ahead and drive. There's simply no way to do that, and I'm just taking a nap here, totally chill, all right? However, just a little variation from there, if you see me here, now, even if you, yes, oh, that's it. And everybody knows what that feels like, okay? So now, that is the shoulder position. That's the most important in terms of being flattened out. Now, I need to take away all the gaps because how can somebody flatten me out? Well, first thing, he could get a cross face, okay? So from here, go ahead. Yes, flatten me out. If I try and fight him with this bottom arm, okay? Such as doing this, like there's times when that can work for a moment, but if this is my key way to keep him fought off, then he can grab my arm too, right? And just uh, just swim this, just literally grab grab my arm right here, good? And he oh, pulls yeah. up, <clears throat> that's it, yeah. okay? So my attachment to him gets him an attachment to me. Uh, the other thing is if we're wearing a gi, a pry bar, okay? So he lifts his elbow, frames his form against my jaw, flattened out, okay? So now, maintaining this shot, top shoulder integrity, okay, go back here, go ahead and get that position or any of the neck positions, okay. okay? pulling up on my arm, going for the cross face, going for a pry bar, good. Okay. The other thing you'll notice from here, if Ryan goes for any chokes, okay, using my lapel, can you choke me? Can you do an X choke? Nope, doesn't work can't get under that head. So all I'm doing here is really just burying my chin and jaw into that into that position. So worst case scenario here, he starts to get in a little bit, good. This is from here, just swim that in like this and just, I'll move myself away just a little bit and then reestablish. But m for the most part, just burying your chin and jaw into your bicep will take care of that, even on strong people. It's very difficult for them to uh, be able to dig in there. Now, how else could he flatten me out? Ryan could get an underhook, okay? So get his arm in here, you see it? Drive me flat. Or, potentially, if he wants to exploit this space in between my arm from coming over with an a overhook or a wizard somehow, he might be able to drive into me, like press into me with the wizard. Yeah, and drive me flat that way, okay? Also entries into chokes, like bravos, darts, things like that. So, okay, from here, all I'm going to do if I feel him start to come over under my arm, okay, is this motion, right? Just burying my elbow, okay, to my rib cage, kind of doing a little curl motion here. Important part is again, shoulder position does not change. So he has that. So Ryan's in here like this, okay, he starts to mess with my arm. I keep my shoulder in that same position while taking that away, right? You see, he's trying to dig in. Go ahead. Yeah, you can't do it. Try and come over. Good. Can't do it. No. And there you have it, right? So if contextually somebody is trying to be tight to you, okay? Sometimes, you know, I've had even my own students to say, yeah, it seems like a little contrived because what if, you know, what if I just jump up and hop to the other side? Okay. We could have a lot of conversations. Um, in MMA, another question like, or if strikes are involved, isn't that super passive? Yeah, it would be very passive. Why would you just lay there if somebody is not disconnected to you if they're, if they're pulling back a shoulder like that, right? You should be in motion. You should be soaking up that space. This is when somebody is bringing their connection fully to you, trying to take away space, trying to be tight, flatten you out. This is where it works perfect. And the last thing we'll show is off the guard pass. Again, once you know that you're beaten, we'll just give a little scenario. Don't let your guard ever fully be passed. Like, it's not completed. You are not totally owned, even though your partner has already gotten past feet, knees, and hips, right? So they may be cross-body. They haven't fully controlled cross-sides. So this is something you want to definitely uh, get into your game. So let's say Ryan beats my legs, right? He starts to pass. I know he's got it. So right here, good. Okay, now I'm going through it, right? So establish position. I start to try and I'm my position, yes. And once I know, right, once I know that he cannot beat my position, then it's up to me to be able to decide when I can go ahead and enter into my escapes and even reverse the position.
Okay. Hopefully that's helpful. Thanks, Henry, for that uh, tip on the arm position, uh, especially being able to take away that cross face, I found was just a beautiful game changer. Immediately implemented that into my game and my teaching. And hopefully this whole sequence here from the bottom escapes and that side position will be a big boost for you guys. Talk soon.